channel. I'm Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. And today we're going to go ahead and do a video blog entry on how to replace a manual Jabsco head with a new Raritan Elegance 12 volt electric flushing head. On Dream Chaser we had this old head. It had, uh, it had a bad joker valve and had the porcelain stained quite a bit from many, many years of mineral deposits. Uh, we've had the Raritan Elegance head before, really liked it in a boat, and decided that we would go ahead and put it in this one. So this blog is going to be um, a little bit long. We're going to cover how to remove the old head, how to install the new Raritan on the base, how to plumb the water inlet and the discharge and macerator lines, um, as well as how to connect the power and all the electrical connections. Uh, the last thing is we'll also go over briefly how to tie the Raritan Elegance head in with a Raritan ElectroScan Marine Sanitation Treatment System. So I hope you find this useful. So the first step in this project was to remove the old head. There's two mounting bolts on the left, front and back right here, and then over on the other side there's two as well. The next step was to go ahead and remove the small white hose that went from the back of the bowl over to the pump. This is the hose that actually carries water to the top of the bowl and helps swirl and push any of the toilet paper or anything down the bowl itself. So it's either fresh or salt water depending on where your boat is. The next step was to actually remove the water inlet line. So it goes from your through hull right to this particular connection. In our case, it was a seawater pump. And then last is the actual discharge hose. Rather than trying to take these hose clamps off, I kind of did this the easy way and just disconnected uh, where, you would where you would replace the joker valve. So in this case, I took the two screws out of the base right here, slid the whole um, mechanism back, and then ultimately um, it was easier to, to remove this way. Uh, this black piece I'm pointing at right here is just the, the joker valve itself, so if you ever have to change it, pretty easy to get to. You pull the old joker valve out, put the new one in, and then slide that assembly back in place. I'm going to leave the discharge hose where it is, and the next step is to go ahead and remove the old Jabsco from the head. So I'll put this whole thing into a trash bag to make sure we don't get any drips as we take it outside of the boat. The location we chose to go ahead and mount the control panels for the toilet are on this little white piece of uh, material here behind where the head's going to sit. So there's going to be two, two panels mounted here. The first is going to be the actual flush control panel, and it has four buttons on it. It has a, um, a regular flush, a heavy duty flush, a water fill, and a water discharge, as well as a tank full indicator. Next to that, we're going to go ahead and install the ElectroScan control panel. It's a digital readout that gives you the status and the condition of the um, sanitation system. Uh, it can also be tied in directly to the electronic head so that when you flush the head, you can automatically trigger a, uh, a cycle of the actual treatment system. I went ahead and checked to make sure there's no wires back behind here. These two from the outlet go down this direction. And now just going to dry place where we want the actual control panels mounted. Because this is going to be a freshwater flush system, we're going to go ahead and tap into the water line, just exposing the bilge area here so that we have easy access to it. It's important to identify the correct line to cut. I actually ran the hot and cold water both to the base and sink for a few moments so that I could feel the temperature difference on the copper lines themselves. Then, using just a standard um, hardware store purchased copper pipe cutter, I went ahead and put it on the cold water line and very slowly and carefully cut it. So rotating, uh, rotating the copper cu pipe cutter, tightening just a little bit, and continuing to rotate it. It's real important that we don't want to misshape or crush the line in any way, given that we're going to be adding a, a T-fitting right into this particular spot. Before I started this job, I turned off the actual freshwater pressure system and opened up all the faucets to relieve any pressure in them. And you can see here there's still some trickling out, and even when the pipe's cut, you can see the flow of the water that was in the lines. Because we have copper pipe, now we're just installing kind of a standard compression fitting T. So you slide the nut onto the actual piece of pipe, uh, push the pipe into the T fitting, and then tighten with a wrench. If you had nylon lines, you would probably just use a nylon barbed line with a hose clamp around it. But we tighten this up on both sides of the pipe itself. I chose to use a 5 foot stainless steel braided water line, so now I'm just feeding the water line down through the floor with the toilet base will mount and pulling it out underneath. Just attaching the braided line to the T itself, tightening this up with a wrench, and that'll finish this piece of it up.
it's now time to close the floor and make it a little bit easier to work inside the head area. So now we're going to go ahead and place the head in the position you want, making sure it's where you want and that the lid will open more than 90 degrees. Next you want to mark the sides and the front of the bowl right where the mounting holes are. This is important for alignment. We'll go ahead and remove the head and get it out of the way. And now at each place where the side marks are and the front marks are, we want to measure a second line 3 eighths of an inch inside of those exterior lines we drew. This particular head came with the mounting brackets on this plastic T. Now just line up the brackets with that inner line that you drew. The manufacturer supplied lag screws to attach these bases to the floor. Uh, I didn't want to avoid cracking the base, so I went ahead and drilled pilot holes for each one. Just go ahead and hand tighten the lag screws, and then ultimately tighten them each down individually with the socket wrench. We want all the plumbing and electrical lines to be hidden by the installation of the toilet itself, so we cut a small hole in the base just below where the discharge line will come off of the toilet. Getting the discharge line to actually curve and come up in such a tight space was actually a real challenge. It ended up being a two-person job. Uh, my wife's hands and arms were smaller and she could fit them between the base and the actual floor, so she pushed up while I grabbed a pair of pliers and pulled on the top side of it. I also fed the water supply line up through the floor base. To make installation easier, I went ahead and applied the joker valve assembly into the hose itself. Now I'm sliding the toilet over the mounting brackets and ultimately installing the water supply line and tightening it up with a wrench. The next step is to attach the discharge line to the back of the bowl. And I apologize, it was hard to get footage of this without my head being in the way. And now it's time to attach the bowl to the mounting brackets. I've got to be honest with you, there's two things that I've learned lessons on in doing this now to, a, to two different boats. First, make sure you take the tape that holds the nuts on the brackets off before you place the bowl into place. The second thing is, it's very difficult to line up the mounting screws on the left and right side of the bowl base as well as the front. And it's not uncommon that as you start to screw them in, the nut on the back side of it will drop off. I had to remove the bowl two or three times to put those nuts back in place and go ahead and tighten them up. So it's definitely a challenge. Be cautious and don't be surprised if you have to repeat a couple of steps on this mounting of the last two bolts. We're now ready to start hooking up the electrical connections. So first we're going to mount the um, smart toilet control panel right here and we need to connect power to that. We'll also tie the macerator pump power to it as well as the water inlet solenoid valves and then this is the plug that will go to the actual smart control panel. To supply power to the head I went ahead and ran a 10 AWG 12 volt marine grade power line from the power source over to the location where I'm going to be tying it into the head. So now I'm just stripping the ends of the positive and the negative cables and we're going to go ahead and make sure that we crimp on the correct type of marine grade um, connector. It's important that you use a closed loop connector and not the little U-shaped ones. They could vibrate loose. So I'm one hand using the um, standard marine grades and crimping them on very well. To keep the final installation nice and neat, we're running the wires down through the toilet base and up under the cabinet so they won't be exposed. So now we just strip off about a quarter of an inch of each of these lines and we start with the red and black connecting the macerator and discharge pump followed by the blue and black for the water inlet valve. There are additional optional items that you can connect to this as well such as a tank level indicator and a electro scan control and then this is where the smart control panel plugs in right here. With the power disconnected we'll go ahead and attach the negative cable as well as the positive side. You will want to attach the smart toilet control in a dry location. In this part of the video I'm actually putting a single screw into the bulkhead wall where it's going to be mounted so that I can align it. I'm just going to lay the wires inside of here until I get this mounted and then I'll tie wrap them all up nice and neat. It's always a good idea to create what's called a drip loop. Essentially, you put a piece of the wire lower than any of the connections so that if condensation or any moisture does happen to hit on the line, 
it drips off the bottom of it, not into the panel itself. Now go ahead and put the uh, screw in the other side and go ahead and tighten it up. This is the way it looks before I've tie wrapped all the wires together. Now it's time to go ahead and install the toilet seat. The manufacturer supplies this plastic screw with this plastic nut. It's real important that the right hand side, when you're facing the toilet, um, the nut that holds the seat in place holds also a strap that goes around the discharge tube, and it's very important that that is attached. See the cutaway for a closer view of that. Once both of the screws are in place, you just lay the toilet seat down on top of those screws, push it down until you hear it snap, and then you rotate each of the latches clockwise. Now it's time to go ahead and mount the electrosand control panel. So I'm just marking the location where I want it, drilling a hole so that I'll be able to feed the wire from the back to the front. And then I'm going to go ahead and feed the wire on through from the back side. And after that, it's just a matter of putting the uh, control panel on the wall and tightening it up with some screws. We are in the home stretch at this point. Now I'm just connecting the 12 volt power to the electrosand control unit and also hooking the ground up between the toilet and the electrosan as well. It's the big test. We push the one flush button. We should see water starting to come into the bowl. We should hear the pump out and macerate. And then we should follow it up with uh, the bowl refilling again. Now it's the integrated test of all parts. So the electrosan says ready to flush. We go ahead and push the one flush button. And we should now hear the toilet flush in the head. And if we go to the waste treatment system, it begins running as well. All's working well. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please like our YouTube channel. Thank you.